Futurecast. This week on the Deep Leadership Podcast. That's what that's what's been happening. If you kind of stay in the weeds, maybe you're an effective leader for a certain size company, but if something changes and you're not able to change with it, then you can cause a lot of problems for your organization. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It is another beautiful day here in North Carolina, and I'm enjoying a hot cup of coffee from our friends at the Salty Sailor Coffee Company. Salty Sailor is a veteran-owned coffee brand and is the official coffee of the Deep Leadership Podcast. Listeners get 10% off their amazing selection of fresh roasted coffee by going to SaltySailorCoffee.com and entering the code DEEP at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by our other sponsors, Leader Connect, Ignite Management Services, and Liberty Strength. All these sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I highly encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. Now, in this episode of the Deep Leadership Podcast, I'm joined by Dr. Ken Russell and John Rupel. Ken and John are the co-authors of Transact, Transform, Transcend, Becoming a Thoughtful Leader, and we sat down and talked about the concepts of transactional, transformational, and transcendent leadership styles. And we discussed how leaders can better navigate their journeys towards becoming more thoughtful leaders. Now, if you're wondering how to become more impactful in your organization, you're going to love this conversation. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Ken Russell and John Ruppel. Ken is an award-winning technologist, trusted digital transformation leader, and innovation amplifier. He is an author, speaker, and board member known for helping organizations define and pursue their transformation journeys. John is a former U.S. Navy submariner, author, and leadership coach, guide, mentor, trainer, and enabler. He works with leaders, their teams, and organizations around the globe to help them interpret, understand, and discern information, helping them realize successful results. They are the co-authors of Transact, Transform, Transcend, Becoming a Thoughtful Leader, Stories from the Journey. Now, in this book, they discuss three types of leaders, transactional, transformational, and transcendent, in order to help leaders navigate and clarify a path towards becoming more thoughtful leaders. I'm excited to have them on the show to learn more about becoming a thoughtful leader. So, Ken and John, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Yes, thank you, John. It is great to meet you guys. And uh, it's interesting because this idea of um, being a thoughtful leader is interesting to me, but also the, the, the going from transactional to transformational is also in- interesting because I'm going to be giving a talk on it this week. So I'm, I'm excited to have you on the show uh, to learn from your expertise and what you learned writing this book. So first of all, what compelled you to write uh, about becoming a more thoughtful, transcendent lead, uh, leader. What was the catalyst for writing this book? Well, interesting word, catalyst. There's, uh, John and I use that word quite a bit in our, in our work. So John and I have known each other for s- several years now at this point, and we were just talking last fall about some of the new uh, learning techniques that were popping into my head. I, I do a lot with mnemonics, uh, a lot with the acronyms, things like that. And I was just talking to, to John about being a resilient leader, you know, what does it take to be a resilient leader? And we were just kind of uh, talking about things. And as I recall, John, you, you, we talked right before Christmas and we sort of mapped out a, what a, a book would look like. if we talked about the different kinds of leaderships that we, that we, the styles that we saw every day. And I think uh, transactional kind of top the list is, you know, what kind of leaders do we most often see in, in the, in the world? Uh, and we very rarely saw transcendent leaders, but everybody was talking about transformational leaders and, and what that was. So we thought, you know what? I like that three T sound. And uh, that's how it kind of got started. I'll let John finish up the story because it's a pretty good story about how we went from starting that conversation to actually having a real book. Uh, and John, I'll let you take it from there. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, so what, what I noticed was coming out of the Navy, you know, and then into the corporate world is that there was all this, you know, 
corporations, everything is built on tracks at transactional based decisions and transaction or, you know, transactional leaders and how we work with each other. Everything was all transaction. And then all of a sudden this, this new stuff started coming in called agile and then which led to DevOps. And I don't even like those terms. I actually prefer to use the term dynamic today because it's really is, it's going about how do you be more dynamic? And that gets into flowing value to your customer. Okay, and if you want to amplify that, it's how do you flow value to your customer at the speed of relevance, right? So that's more of the graduate course on it. And what we realized in having that conversation is, you know, now we have, you know, the millennials, they became the largest demographic in our work, workforce in 2015, and they have a transformational value and belief set and a different quality of life, right? They, they look at life solely different from quality of life. So how do the transactional leaders and these transactional-based organizations have been built on decades, which no ding here. I mean, we... It, we got to where we're at. Now it's just time to keep evolving. So that's where the transformational came in. And that was about how do we transform in that flowing value of the customer being dynamic. And then that led in the epiphany of, uh, well, there, there's got to be a better way. Okay. So, and what is that? And how is that? And how do we really feel about our leadership? And how do we really, you know, you walk away and okay, maybe you did a good job from a dollars and cents perspective, or maybe you hit that, checked a few boxes. But how did you, when you go to sleep at night, how do you feel about that? And that's where we got into the whole transcendent leadership piece. Where we started looking at more, you know, those types of things where what our intuition and our gut feelings are telling us and how we, you know, and we sort of got into that and we played on that for a bit. And then, you know, Ken came up with this great, you know, way of saying that it's above the fray. And when he said above the fray, it just clicked on me as like, okay, that's it. We got to do the book. Let's go. And so <laughs> that's where we went forward is transcendent leader, thinking and doing above the fray. And we, you know, Kenna is great with these acronyms and mnemonics. And so we actually have a leadership saying, which actually summarized the whole system using the mnemonics from the book. Wow, that's really interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's you know, like, like you said, I think we're seeing a shift. And, you know, I give the young people a lot of credit because they're, they're basically saying they want to do more than just earn a paycheck, right? And so I think, you know, I'm, I'm 56. And so we, you know, we were, we went, came into the workforce and we just, we worked and we did what the company said, you know, and, and most of us stayed with one company for a long time. And, you know, we were going to retire like our parents did, but this new generation, I think I give them credit because they say they, they want more out of life than just earning a paycheck. And they want to be part of an organization that's doing something that's meaningful and they want to have a life of meaning and impact. And so that's really interesting. So it, you're right. We have to change as leaders uh, if we want to be successful now in our corporations, we can't just do the old uh, transactional leadership model that we've been doing for years. So I do, I do like the fact that you're now you're taking it to that next level of of being, you know, a transcendent leader. Help us a little bit understand the difference between the three. So transactional, we've been talking about transformational and transcendental. How how, how are they different? What are what are some characteristics of those? Yeah, well, I think uh, you kind of nailed it on the transactional. And we all kind of, especially those of us of a certain age, we kind of came into the business, you know, just like, as John said, you know, checking boxes, you know, uh, you know, and nothing wrong with that, by the way, because we're, we're still going to be transcendent. Uh, I mean, trans transactional in right, all that we do. It's just, we tend to not just stay in what, what, what mode, if that makes sense. But the modality that we have of uh, being transformational means that we're paying more attention. Right. And we're ready to have those conversations. And we are focused more on our lifestyle than just, you know, getting a paycheck. Um, I like to talk about uh, the word propinquity. That means nearness. That, you know, this idea that, you know, uh, what I have to bring to the table is pretty good. What you have to bring to the table is pretty good. But together, we can be better. And I think that's where you see a lot of transformational stuff happen. Where it becomes transcendent, though, is where. You know, you kind of, as John said, you look above the fray. So I imagine that, you know, you, you, your head's down doing work and then all of a sudden life passes you by. But if you just take a moment to kind of lift your head up and kind of pay attention to what's going around, uh, you, you get a lot more satisfaction out of life, not just for yourself, but for your organization as well. Because if you pay attention to the things that are going on around you, uh, in the book, we call it epidata insight. This idea that you, you're focused on the data around you, not just the data that you know, deals with what your, your your daily work is. So it's the you know the the weather, it's the people, it's the events, it's what's happening all around you that you need to be aware of. And I think that makes you a better leader. And particularly, I'll, I'll toss it over to John for some comment on this one too. But if you're 
in a leadership position and you're not paying attention and you're not walking alongside of your 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 team, then you're missing out. And I think that's what the transcendent leader really is good at is just being aware and having that awareness of uh, what's going on in your organization. Yeah, and the key the key thing that you know thinking about transformational to transcendent. So, you know, like I said, we got transactional. I think everybody understands that transformational. What what people may not realize about transformational is that there's a four core elements of transformational leadership, and those four core elements make a system, a systematic approach where you can eliminate eighty percent of the failure rates for why projects fail due to lack of communication, lack of leadership, all the key buzzwords that you use there of, you know, why things fail. And that's why transformational leadership is so powerful is because you're basically, you're creating a vision, you're communicating the vision, you're then uh, getting buy-in and ex- starting to execute around that vision. And then you're sustaining the commitment to that vision, making that vision a reality. And so that's transformational leadership right there. And then, so now as you're working in that and you're doing that, transformations, you know, we, we do that. That's big changes, right? People think of that as, okay, I'm going to transform. It's a big change. Well then, you know, can, you know, enlighten me on this word discernment. And, you know, and he said, John, it's not about the big change. Always you got to, you know, don't, don't try to hit a home run every time. You know, what about the small changes? And I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. That's more power. So discerning is how you become above the fray. And in order to discern, you have to have wisdom. And in the book, we have a data model which we go insights to wisdom to discernment at the end. And so you follow that data, the evolution of your ability to understand data and process data yourself internally and externally around you with with folks around you, your team. And you guys start discerning and using your wisdom. Now you're in this area now. It's all about the flow and what's going on around you. And it's not really the politics anymore. It's not the ideology. And that's what I like about flowing value to your customer is that you get above all that stuff out there. We'll call it noise, the fray. Um, don't want to be negative about it, but you know, there's a lot of not a good stuff going on, right? So keeping it positive, it's how do you discern then to, to leave all that behind and get to that better place so that you're a better person, your people are you know, in a better state of mind, more balanced. Really, what, what really matters in life? What really counts? And then... And then from there, that's where you're working with your customers now. And so that's where that discernment versus transformational is, is that, as Ken would say, it's that just that few degrees change. And that's what the stories are, you know, in the book, we have the visionettes of the stories. And that's what you're going to see is that we actually, through the storytelling, we show examples of what does that really mean in real life, in real life situations? And how did we experience it, you know, in ourselves? And that, so that, that to me is, I would say, how I'd sum up those, those three. That makes a lot of sense. You know, you talk about the fray, and I, and I like to think of it as that there, there's many leaders that that like to be in the fray. They feel they find value in, you know, being a part of that. You know, of of you know whatever is happening. You know, working in the business, not on the business, right? So they they like being deep into the details, right? And so you're saying that really, if you want to, you know, really be transcendent as a leader you've got to be able to step get above get above that and see that oh, sure. you know it's you yeah, know I, you know and, and you pick up a great point too with that thing you know you know suddenly i've got leader friends of mine who've been uh you know and again I've, I've been very fortunate in my career to i've been a cio uh and uh in positions where i've had you know leadership positions and the ones that have failed or the ones that have struggled are the ones that continue to stay deep in the, the, the weeds or the fray, right? Uh, and the ones that kind of kind of rise above it have been successful. And I think part of that is, and I'm going to, and, and John mentioned the stories too, the, we call, call stories from the journey in the book for a reason, because we, we take that little sidestep to talk about some of these examples. And one of the examples that I can share with you here is that, you know, there was a, a, a really great, great technology leader that I knew years ago. And he knew what he was doing. He knew, he knew how to get things done. But when his company got acquired by a larger company, he'd never worked in a larger corporate kind of environment. So he was used to doing the same thing, expecting those results. But when he worked for this larger company, it wasn't the same. So he basically alienated most of the company by creating what we would call a SWAT team or special weapons and tactics team to, to solve a single problem. But by doing that and focusing on that, he just avoided and missed everything else. It wasn't, he wasn't even aware of that it was there. So that's what, that's what can happen if you kind of stay in the weeds. Maybe you're an effective leader for a certain size company, but if something changes 
and you're not able to change with it, then you can cause a lot of problems for your organization. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, John, you were you know Navy submariner, right? And I, I often t- talk about a commanding officer has a very unique responsibility. You know, and if you're in a situation where you're in battle stations, you've got maybe uh, an enemy close by, there's a lot of things happening. And if you're deep in the fray, you're not going to be able to see the big picture and kind of rise above that and look at the tactics and what's happening you know, why Why guys like me who were junior officers, we were in the fray, but you have to sort of get above that if you just want to see that big picture, that tactical picture. Otherwise, you're going to get, you're going to get lost, right? So I, yeah. I think that is a good example of, of, of uh, the idea of getting above the fray. Yeah, and no, I mean, a great example that actually is the military is during these emergence days. So this picture over here, I'm in front of Jason, which is Woods Holes, who he's um, deep sea vehicle that I, I helped, you know, work on and for many years of my life. And one day Jason went missing, he got off the tether. And so we were out there in the middle of the ocean. And one of those folks that, you know, Dr. Bob Ballard, right. He was expedition leader. He was above the fray and he started tossing two by fours over the side of the ship. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, you know, what's he doing? Why is he doing it? Right. Sure enough, half hour later, he was doing that pretty good drift rate. And so basically working with the captain and the first mates in the bridge and everybody hands on deck, let's get the binoculars up. I mean, from a transponder, you know, a sonar ring, we could have, you know, we did have some navigational ability till the transducer popped above the surface of the water. Now all of a sudden it's a floating, right? We don't have communications anymore. So that was design change, right? So the next dive, of course, we put the transducer upside down, pointing down the water. So if that ever happened again, we learned from that. But again, it was, you know, it was, it was Dr. Ballard's ability to stay above in that big picture. We, so we lost, but then we found Jason. So then that to me is a great example of, you know, at sea of, you know, this philosophy being put to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone's running around there like with chickens with their heads cut off, we but there's were. one guy that's staying calm and throwing two by fours over the, over the side. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's he doing? He right. knows what he's doing. Because <laughs> I was a navigator at the time. Tom and I were navigators and we're just like, they grabbed us and you guys get up there. We got an issue. Okay, we're on it. We're sitting there doing the, the ping times, doing manual calculations to the computer, all that stuff, making sure, okay, we know we can get us within a ballpark. But once that hits the surface, guys, it's all hands on deck. And we were getting close to evening. That was the other thing. So, you know, right at dusk, right at, you know, right when that sun is starting to drop down is when we, when we found it. So it, it all worked out in the end. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. As a leader, you're responsible for the mission and the people assigned to you. Regardless of the size of your team, employees are depending on you for their lives and careers. For the sake of your team and the people who entrust you with this role, you need to master the skills to become a great leader. Best-selling leadership author John Rennie is proud to introduce the Qualified Leadership Book Series. This new series teaches you how to become a people-centered leader. Great leaders know that employees who are respected, appreciated, and allowed to grow will go the extra mile. These books provide real-world leadership wisdom written from a hands-on perspective. If you want to be a more effective leader, this is the one book series you should read this year. This three-book series contains the following best-selling leadership books. I Have the Watch, You Have the Watch, and All in the Same Boat for one low price of $39.99. Begin your journey to become a leader worth following. Go to johnsrenny.com and get your order in today. This episode is brought to you by Leader Connect, a leadership training company and video platform founded by the leadership book author and deep leadership podcast guest, Neil Jurd. Leader Connect is a video and podcast streaming platform for leaders and teams. Watch it alone or as a team, and each video supports you and your team, allowing you to improve performance and build a great culture. Join hundreds of experts and learn about leadership, planning, public speaking, team building, mindfulness, and a range of other subjects that will help you lead well and build a great team. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the experts on this platform. Leader Connect is offering a 10% discount to all deep leadership listeners. Go to leader-connect.co.uk and enter the code DEEP at checkout. Master your leadership 
with Leader Connect. This episode is brought to you by Ignite Management Services. Ignite is led by Mike Watson, who you might remember from episode 137. Mike and his team believe that everything starts with leadership, whether it's strategy execution or cultural transformation. It's the role of the leader to create the conditions for their people to succeed. The team at Ignite can help you develop critical habits to enhance your leadership capability and transform your business. Ignite Management is now offering the Resilient Leadership Assessment Tool. This is an online questionnaire designed to assess and guide leadership development, coaching, and team building. It provides leaders an opportunity to gain insights into their leadership strengths and development needs. After taking this assessment, you will receive a custom detailed report that provides practical and actionable recommendations to enhance your effectiveness. I have taken this assessment myself and found it to be extremely valuable in helping me make changes to my leadership approach. Right now, Ignite is offering 15% off the price of this tool to the deep leadership audience. Go to ignitemanagement.ca and enter the code START15 at checkout to get started today. In the book, you you, you talk about acronyms, mnemonics. Uh, you've got a, several that you use. Maybe you can talk, th- talk us through some of them. One of them is lead, one is dent, and one is candid. Do you want to maybe walk us through some of those and what they mean? Sure, sure. I, and I, I think there, there's several, right? So, but lead is special because lead happened while we were writing the book. Uh, I, I didn't come into the book writing process with lead, uh, but John and I were just talking and I came one day and said, look, this, this works. Because we had one that was called listen, you know, because that's, that's what you do as a leader. You, you listen and that's learn, interpret, shape, um, transform, evolve, and nurture. Okay. So that, that's listen. And we came into the book with that and that's a strong one. I said, but what if we added that to another? What, what, that's just a building block. So uh, L and lead became listen. So that made sense. And then what do you do after that as, as, a, as, a, as a leader, a thoughtful leader? What, what do you do next? And I think the word empathize came, well, the, the empathy part, you know, being an empathetic leader. So that's L-E, right? And then the third one, A, uh, let's absorb that you pay attention to everything and you, you listen, you, you pay attention, you're aware, you're, you're empathetic, you absorb. Uh, again, you learn as much as you can about as much as you can. And then finally, there's that D word, discern. You have the ability to make those one or two degrees of, 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 of assessment, of change, uh, to, to work for that organization, to, to discern, to make, make a, a subtle change. So L-E-A-D, that's what uh, we got out of that, and it seems to work pretty well. You know, it makes a lot of sense. I, I do talk to young, um, you know, graduate students who are, you know, kind of coming into the workforce and they're going to be, you know, young leaders. And, and one of the things I talk about is how do you, um, how can you be an effective leader when you're younger and less experienced than the group around you? And we ultimately come to these listening, you know, these em- uh, empathizing type, type of things. They, and they come to it on their own as we talk through, you know, how do you become an effective leader when you are not the, you know, not the oldest. But it's it's about having respect for your team, being well, being present, and then listening, you know, and having Absolutely. that empathetic ear. And so it it makes sense that, uh, you know, the the lead in my mind makes a lot of sense based on what you know what I've I've talked about and what you know when I talk to students about that is how do you how do you how do you listen? How do you learn? And how do you uh, take that and then use it to be, you know, to make better decisions? I think that makes a lot of sense. How about the 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 dent? How does? Or sorry, John, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, I think go. Keep going. We'll keep going that way. No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So how about how about dent? How what does that go uh, stand for? Well, so I know I know John wants to do candid, so I'm gonna go ahead and do dent for you. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> you, so I'm 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 um I'm being involved in you know teaching, training, education all my life, as well as technology. So I'm sort of one of those people that kind of exists at that nexus of, of people and process and transformation and technology, right? <clears throat> so one thing that you learn very quickly is that when people learn, uh, particularly adults who have gotten kind of past that uh, primary, secondary school phase of their lives, it's harder for an adult to learn. It's harder to to get new knowledge into the brain. <clears throat> so the way you do that is you disorient them. Uh, and, you know, sometimes that's very subtle. <clears throat> sometimes that's very severe. But the point is the brain learns better when it's kind of shaken up to the point where 
things that you thought were true, well, maybe they weren't. So you have that kind of curiosity piece that comes in. So the first letter of dent is, in fact, disorient. So this idea of kind of mm. creating a disorienting dilemma, uh, either that's manufactured or something that you just kind of impose upon yourself to be curious and to say, hmm, this may not be what I always thought it was. So you're opening up for new things. That's, that's the most important thing. And then the, uh, the E is simply the word extend. Uh, and that typically means, uh, is this new data that I'm coming up with? Is this you know, novel, brand new stuff? Or is it something that's just an extension of something that's already out there in the world? And knowing either is important because if you, if you run around thinking that what you're doing is brand new and it really isn't, that, that's kind of difficult as well. But if you kind of say, well, well, here's my take on what I've, I've, I've picked up on, and you've learned something, that makes the end part much more easy. And that is in for navigate. It helps you navigate what you've done. So you kind of create a pathway uh, to you know, do new things, explore new ways of doing things, and just uh, uh, apply your education, you know, apply this way. Uh, and then finally, the T is, in fact, the word transform again. It kind of shows up a lot of places. But uh, if you do the disorienting dilemma piece, you do the extending of that, you do the navigation, you end up with a transformational approach. And I think uh, the, I'll leave you with this. Um, uh, Steve Jobs used to say that we should we should all try to make uh, a dent here uh, in the universe, or why, or otherwise, why are we here? I'm paraphrasing here, but you know that made such sense to me when I came up with this this mnemonic that it really was something that I thought was worthwhile in putting in the book. So, uh, lead and dent. There you go. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, really interesting because. Someone might say, "Well, we want to disorient our our, uh, our 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 people." And the fact of the matter is, when I've seen big transformations in organization, is when we are when we do get uh, disoriented, and usually it's because something major has shifted, or we get a command. You know, something comes from on high that is uh, seems impossible, and so we start thinking about, "Oh, how do we do the impossible?" And I think that's when the breakthroughs happen, and that's when we end up doing things that we never expected. And so that does make sense to me. You, you say it, you, you're open to new things when you're when you're in this when you've lacked your orientation. So the yeah. comfort factor is gone, and you're like you're open yeah. to new ideas. And I'd say my teams over the years have been most creative when we were in those positions. When I was like, we have got to come up with a plan to move this plant in six months, and they said, well, that's impossible. I said, well. That's what we have to do. So how do we do it? And so that's when the really creative ideas come come out of teams. So I love that, and I do love the the um, Steve Jobs quote. By the way, <laughs> that's one I use a lot. Uh, we need we do need to make like our dent in the universe for sure. Um, John, how about the uh, candid? What does that that stand for? Yeah. So candid was you know we were we were brainstorming. How do you do metrics, right? Because that's what a lot of the leaders, right? Our all our customers are asking. They're all about the metrics. What metrics? How do you metric, you know, metric, metrics, all this, or have metrics for it all. And we started realizing, you know what? Keep it simple, right? Candid. Can you put your head on your pillow at night knowing you've done the best that you could do to lead? And I call it this way, love from the heart with a reverence for life, flowing value to your customer. Have you done, have you and your team done that? You as a leader and have you led your team in doing that? Yes or no? It's pretty simple, you know, and it's just, and, and that brings in the whole discernment part, right? And being a transcendent leader is you're going above the fray. It's above the politics, above the ideology. It's really gets into the heart and that gets into John Chambers. So I was at, I don't, were you at the NC and North Carolina CEO conference in 2019? No, you no. there by chance? Okay. <laughs> I was there with a client and they had brought me in. And, and we visited and John Chambers was on, was on stage and he said, folks, you got to lead, you got to love from your heart when you lead. And that he kicked off the keynote with that. And that was, and then his assistant came up later and said, John's not kidding. We love each other while we worked and da, 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 da. And then throughout that entire conference, over 50% of the panelists and leaders, uh, speakers all admitted, yes, we do. Or, you know, some of them didn't, but you know, most of them did. And to this day, I find it funny because I bet if John wouldn't have said that, I don't think anybody else would have said that the entire conference. But that became the whole center of that conference was leading from love. So that's where that whole piece comes in, the can part. And then did is simply, did I have to apologize? Did I have to apologize for my behavior? 
what I said, how I did things, you know, did I have to apologize? And that goes into a favorite saying, I forgot the person's name, but it's, you know, people, and I'll paraphrase here, I, I won't get it exact, but people don't remember what you did, but they remember how you made them feel as you led them. Is that, um, you guys are probably familiar with that quote. Yeah. I think it's Maxwell, but I might could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, the name, but um, our listeners, by the way, are screaming at their radios and they're saying who it is. And <laughs> wearing their hands like, wait, no, they're her. <laughs> well, that's what I love about podcasting is the listeners know the answer to this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's where, you know, I'm picturing a slide when I teach. There's a slide. It's a blue background, but I'm not, I'm missing the name right there. But, uh, but yeah, but that that's really where the, you know, Canon came up. We wanted a simple way because our acronym that we came up with, you know, for the system is you lead by making a dent, you listen, be bold, and innovate while being candid with yourself, your teammates, and your organization. And right there, we hit on lead, dent, listen, bold, innovate, and candid. And just by those five mnemonics and acronyms alone, you have an entire leadership system that allows you to get the transactional, transformational, and transcendent. I it's love that. that. It can be that simple. Can be. If you, you know. I love it's that. It's a fun read, too. It's a fun read. You know, we've we, we got s- s- stories sprinkled throughout all the, the regular part of the book. We've got stories sprinkled there. And we have a, a young lady who did her first illustration credit with us. Uh, a young lady named Ella. She's, what, 16, 17 years old. And she illustrated the book. And it's a fun read. It's got cute little characters. Uh, it's It's really enjoyable. I love it. I love it. It's great. And I, and I like the fact that you've touched on the, the subject of love and, and you know, the listeners to the show, they've known, I've, I've interviewed, I think, three different Navy SEAL commanders and the word love came out of all three of their mouths when they talked about leading their teams. And and, and, if, and if a Navy SEAL could, can, a commander can talk about love, then I think we as business leaders can talk about it. But uh, absolutely. And John, you know, you you have a submarine background. And so, you know, there's there's something there, you know, a crew at sea, you have each other's backs and you you care deeply for your crewmates and there's something there. And I know as a, as a you know, I've run a relatively small business and I know my team, you know, we've been together eight years and we have a deep respect and love for each other. We want to see this business succeed and grow and we care about each other deeply. And I think that's a big part of effective leadership and uh, doesn't get talked about enough. So I'm glad it gets brought up in this show uh, for, for sure. Um, Go ahead. I was just going to say, and especially like the deep submergence community, right? The deep submergence projects, the special projects stuff I was, I was involved in. Again, you know, those, those situations, I don't know in the commercial world or civilian world, how you can replicate that experience to those extremes that we, we find ourselves in. But yeah, but it was just looking over. I love you, man. I got your back. That's, that's really from that yeah. right there. It's like, how do we personify that in today's corporate world? That's, that's really the challenge here. It is the challenge. Absolutely. Um, so what are your hopes for this new book? Well, I think they've already been exceeded. I mean, we get to talk to folks like you, which is fantastic. So it seems like every week now, and the book's been out for about uh, not quite two months. Uh, and it's just been a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, people wanted to talk to us. They've invited us to come speak at various events and things like that. Uh, it's just been fun to talk about this subject has been on the probably the tips of everyone's mind, you know, this idea of a transcendent leader. Maybe they didn't know how to put it into words, maybe. But uh, I think we've hit uh, we've hit something, and I think I'm very excited about possibilities going forward. So, uh, John, what do you think? Yeah, no, likewise. I mean, for me, it was how do you get to talk about this squishy stuff, right? Like you said, the yeah. seal guys with love, right? And that the you know the different teams I've been on, um, you know, there, it's it, that love component. How can we do that? And that really took you know, for Ken and I, we've been we've been asking ourselves that same question for over a year. How can we do that? And that's where I think for this book, speaking about the transcendent leader, the way it came together, you can now have that conversation. And that's really what we want to do. For us, it's, you know, and you know, what do I want to have happen? I just want people to have the conversation, be open, let's talk about it, let's put it on the table. Now that there's a way we can show one way, you know, our way of, of having that conversation. My hope is that it opens it up and I work with leaders all around the world. And that's really the hope. That's, that's really my, my hope is for everybody is that, Hey, check it out. See this language. If you don't like ours, okay, great. Create your own, but at least we'll have the conversation. I just want to, I just want to be that catalyst 
for that for these conversations of caring and and loving with care, you know, leading leading while caring from a good space, a that. positive space. Yeah, I love that. Well, what final message would you like to leave with our listeners today? Well, for me, I, I, I would direct them to page ninety nine. Um, I've been kind of drawn to that ever since we've uh, kind of been doing this, but. Uh, um, every chapter opens up with uh, a quote from a famous person, you know, uh, and in this particular one, page 99, chapter nine, uh, it talks about um, one of my favorite songs as a kid. It was Love Will Keep Us Together by Neil Sedaka and Howard Greenfield. Uh, the popular version was, of course, the Captain and Tennille. You probably know that song. But in the middle of that song, and this is the quote that we pulled out into the book, it was, hear with your heart and you won't hear a sound. And I love that because if you pay attention to what's in here and not so much what you're paying attention to here, um, that'll give you some guidance. And I think that was uh, the message we got from Neil Sedaka and Howard Greenfield. I love that. I love that. So list, uh, leaders uh, who are listening in, <laughs> you have to lear- learn to lead with your heart and listen with your heart. I love that. Such a great message uh, in this book. Um, it's called Transact, Transform, Transcend, Becoming a Thoughtful Leader. And fantastic. This is the kind of book that we need. Um, how can our listeners find out more about uh, each of you, uh, this new book, and your company? So if you guys, uh, Intelligence Catalyst is the company, and Lead the Flow is our URL or, you know, the web where you can find the website. And on there, we have a page that, that talks about product services. You'll see the book. And not only would we like you to go there, you can get the book on Amazon, of course. Uh, but but the other thing, though, is on our website, we actually have a form where you, you can share your story. Mm-hmm. And what I'd like to encourage leaders out there is to please go on to our product page and, sh- you know, introduce yourselves by sharing us, sharing with us your story. And yeah, I, what, what part of the things we'd like to see is we'd like to have, you know, a conference or a group group or, you know, a group of us get together from time and start, you know, start sharing our stories together. And that's one of the things we're looking for in the future is having people that get together and have these conversations together. Yeah, I'll echo that too. Uh, you know, every time we do one of these talks, especially uh, a, a live event or something, someone invariably, you know, grabs me when I get off stage and, and shares their story with me. And I'm thinking, please go to the site and, sh- and share it you know, for everyone to hear. Because some of these stories are just fantastic about, you know, someone's first experience with a good leader or, or a bad leader, mind you. I mean, but there's a story there. And I think that's what's uh, fabulous about the this book is that we, we take the time to share stories about the journey. And I think that's that's exciting. But people can find all of us on uh, LinkedIn too. So that's that's not a bad place to find us and connect with us and, and just have conversations with us. That'd be fine. Fantastic. We're going to put links in the show notes for all of their resources. And again, uh, listeners, reach out, tell your story. I love the idea of collecting stories uh, because that's, you know, we've, had many guests on this show talking about storytelling, how important it is for leadership. But your story, your particular story is very important. And I think you sharing that story builds a collective of stories and experiences around this this journey that we've been talking about moving towards, you know, uh, transactional leadership, which is give me a paycheck for for work that I do versus and then you getting to, uh, you know, being able to be a, a transcendental uh, leader where you're actually, you're doing something for the good of, of mankind, the good of the people around you, and you're really doing great things. So we all want to make that journey. We all want to become more thoughtful leaders. So I highly encourage you to find this book, get this book. We'll have the link in the show notes and uh, enjoy this journey. Enjoy this, uh, the, the, the storytelling that's in this book. Uh, so Ken and John, I want to thank you for coming on the show, sharing this book, and sharing all this information because I think you've helped us think differently about leadership. So thanks for coming on the show. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Thank John. you. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Have you 
Have you ever wondered what actually happens in Congress every day? Stay informed on Capitol Hill's daily happenings with a concise, factual summary of the Senate and House of Representatives activities from the previous session, free from bias, on the Congressional Record Daily Digest podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and discover the process from the heart of U.S. politics. The Congressional Record Daily Digest, an Electric Cast production. Hey there, I'm DC. I host the Rock Podcast, Back to the Arena, The Interviews. It's about a 30-minute podcast where I talk one-on-one with a band who has released new music. You can find us on all the best podcast sites like Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, and more. If you're a rock fan like me, subscribe today to Back to the Arena, The Interviews. Electric Acid.